A Focus XC comes with one reactor, two reactors, four reactors, or six reactors. It's great for a novice and excellent for an expert. We have two modes in the software. One can go to setup and calibration, then go to settings and we have a template mode and a protocol mode, and also a chem file. The chem file mode is for when you only want to do one or two steps. Protocol mode is for when you want to write a totally new protocol and it gives you options to almost any chemistry that you wish. The template mode is one page and it is very simple to use. Let's do the template mode first. You select template mode and click OK. Next, we start the synthesis. Since this is a new synthesis, the first step is to name it. I will call it HS12345 in this example, but you can name it whatever you like. Then I click OK. The next step is choosing the reactor. This instrument has six reactors, but I am only going to choose one reactor. The first thing I do is enter the sequence. For example, the first amino acid, glycine. The second one is leucine. The third one is glutamine. I'll add aspartic acid and arginine, valine, tyrosine. You can select as many amino acids as you wish. In this example, I'm selecting 10 amino acids. Now, one can analyze the sequence to see how difficult it is, and this can be done very easily. But first, let's complete the information for an amino acid. Double-click an amino acid to view a pop-up window for its information. The first thing we do is enter the resin. For example, you can have a Wang resin or a rink amide resin. Name the resin depending on whatever resin you have. Here is the one-page protocol one can set up very quickly and easily. For example, here you have a Wang resin at the top and your first amino acid is glycine. And you are using 200 milligrams of resin with a fold excess of five. You can change this to three, for example. You can also have 100 milligram of resin, for example, instead. Next, you see substitution and amino acid concentration. The next section is swelling where you have DCM or it could be DMF, for example. The volume is eight milliliter with mixing of 15 minutes using mechanical and nitrogen is perfect. Under deep protection, if you want cooling, you can select it. But in this example, we do not need that. You see that for the first amino acid, you have 20% piperidine DMF using five milliliter, which you could change to eight milliliter if you like and we're going to mix for two minutes rather than five minutes and using a different type of mixing. You see you have three modes of mixing. There is mechanical, nitrogen, and mechanical and nitrogen. In this example, we're going to use only the mechanical. The second time, you have 20% piperidine, volume of five, which you can also make eight if you wish, and rather than 10 minutes, we'll do 15 minutes followed by mixing this time using nitrogen and mechanical. In washing, you have washing with DMF, which again, we can change from five milliliter to eight milliliter with mixing one time and zero time repeating, but you can repeat as many times as you wish. The wash solvent is DMF, six milliliter, and hold time of 12 seconds. This can be 60 seconds or whatever you would like. You can also have flash chromatography where you would have this 0.1 second. Wash time is three times, but we'll make it two times or one time. You can have this depending on what you want to do. Next, in the coupling section, the amino acid can be determined by volume or precisely with the liquid sensor LS1. The LS1 measuring vessel using the photocells allows you to measure exactly what you want. 
you can put LS1, the liquid sensor, to 3 milliliter, 5 milliliter, or whatever you would like, depending on the concentration and also the extra fold you want to use. The same thing with HBTU and the same thing with DIEA. Remember, we recommend the concentration of these be 0.2 or 0.3 or maximum 0.4. DIEA could be twice as concentrated as an amino acid and HBTU because you want to use one equivalent of amino acid, one equivalent HBTU and two equivalent of the base. Next, you see you can have more than one time of coupling. You can have automatic double coupling by selecting it. If you want capping, you select capping for each time. You can have different options. At the same time, if you go to the right, and you want first cycle deprotection, you can select it. If you do not, because sometimes you have rink amide resin that could have no F mock, so you just deselect it and it will not deprotect. But since we have a Wang resin, we select first cycle deprotection. The last amino acid on cycle, you can remove the F mock amino acid or you can leave it on, whatever you like to do. These options are available so you can use them exactly the way you like. Now you can heat the reaction vessel. If you want to heat the RV, simply select RV heating which provides automatic heating of the reactor for you. But if you're heating the reactor, you do not need 40 minutes of coupling time. So we suggest adding 5 minutes or 8 minutes depending on the temperature of the reactor that you have set up. So I remove the heating and will automatically have 40 or 30 minutes, if I change it, of mixing. For double coupling, if you have it, you can also change it to the time you would like to have. We are working with only one reactor. So since it is only one reactor, we click at the upper right, apply to cycle one with RV1. Remember, that if you have more than one reactor, the chemistry and volume of each one can be different. Or you can select apply for all peptides or apply to one peptide, depending on how many peptides you have and what protocols you want to use. So this gives you options to have different chemistry for each reactor. Since I have only one reactor, I select apply to cycle one with RV1. Next, you can see the sequence I set up in RV1 and all I have to do is save what I did and click run. By clicking run, the software automatically writes the protocol that I assigned earlier. If you look at the bottom, you can see the sequence is exactly as I created it. Glycine, leucine, alanine, and it goes on. You see also that above, the first line is green. This means it is the initial step where you start the reaction. Remember, when you are doing this chemistry and synthesizing the peptide and you have stopped, you can restart the synthesis any position you want. But when you are in the beginning, it automatically goes to the first amino acid. When the synthesis is occurring, the blue color shows you where you are. For example, when we are doing glutamine, and it is in step four or step five, you will see a blue color. If the color is red, you are at the end of the process. You can also stop the process anywhere else you wish by selecting a line and clicking stop. Let's take a look at the protocol. You can see here it is filling the RV1 with the DMF with eight milliliter, which is what we told it to do. We also told the software to mix for 15 minutes, then empty RV1 and wash with 16 milliliter DMF, hold it for 10 seconds, and then empty to the waste. The next step is deprotection occurring in RV1. Remember that if you have more than one reactor, it tells you the reactor number. In here, we only have one reactor. So it says fill RV1 with 20% piperidine with 5 milliliter. Then wash the MV and wash the line and then mix the RV 
one for five minutes and then empty the RV one. The next part of deep protection shows to fill in RV one with 20% piperidine with five milliliter mix RV one for 15 minutes and empty the RV one. Then it goes through the wash. So it washes RV one with six milliliter of DMF and hold it for 0.1 second. So this would be like a color chromatography wash. Then it empties to waste. Next is filling RV1 from DMF with eight milliliter and mixing RV1 for one minute, which then continues mixing and emptying. You can wash this as many times as you wish and repeat it as many times as you would like. If you are going to wash the resin like a chromatography wash, rather than wash it multiple times, Wash it with 16 milliliter or 20 milliliter at 0.1 one time. 